So, in this lecture, I will take up solution of the integral momentum equations or the integral equation of the velocity boundary layer. My task would be to introduce you to the general solution procedure and then using this procedure study the effects of the pressure gradient and suction and blowing. I recall again that integral solutions can be obtained for arbitrary variations of the free stream velocity u infinity at the edge of the boundary layer and the wall velocity at the uh, at the surface of uh, uh, at the solid surface we call suction or blowing. To refresh our memory the integral momentum equation reads as d delta 2 by d x plus 1 over u infinity d u infinity by d x plus 2 delta 2 by delta 1 equal to c f x by 2 plus v w by 2. How do we solve this equation? Just recall it is the procedure here is quite the reverse of what we adopted for similarity method. In the similarity method a third order similarity equation was solved with appropriate boundary conditions to obtain the velocity profile. So, the velocity profile came out of the solution of the ordinary differential equation and from which the integral parameters such as delta 1, delta 2 and c f x were recovered by integrating and differentiating the profiles. In contrast, in integral method the velocity profile is assumed usually a polynomial in y by delta such that it satisfies the boundary conditions. Having assumed this profile, we evaluate the integral parameters delta 1, delta 2 uh, and c f x and substitute them in the integral momentum equation. The IME is then solved to obtain delta 2 as a function of x and hence all other parameters as functions of x. So, the procedure is quite the reverse of the similarity method and to the extent that we have assumed a velocity profile that uh, which satisfies boundary conditions, but nonetheless is an approximation to what could be the real velocity profile at a given x. So, we say let u over u infinity which is the dimensionless velocity and it would be a function of x and y uh, be a polynomial in eta variable where eta is y by delta a plus b eta plus c eta square plus d eta cube and e eta 4. So, there are 5 constants to be determined a, b, c, d and e and this we do by invoking 5 boundary conditions and the boundary conditions are as follows. At the wall y equal to 0 of course, u is equal to 0 which will render u equal to 0, but the second condition is that uh, if you look at the momentum equation Now, if I write this equation at y equal to 0, then clearly that term will be 0 because u itself is 0. V however, will be V w into d u by d y at y equal to 0. This term of course, will survive u infinity d u infinity by d x plus nu d 2 u by d y square at y equal to 0. So, I use this as a boundary condition to say that nu d 2 u by d y square at y equal to 0 is equal to v w d u by d y at y equal to 0 minus u infinity d u infinity by d x. And that is what I have written here as the boundary condition 4, uh, I mean the equation 4, which is the second boundary condition at the wall. At the edge of the boundary layer y equal to delta, 
u will equal u infinity and therefore, the left hand side will be equal to 1 and so will each of these eta's will be 1. So, you will have a condition a plus b plus c plus d plus e equal to 1. Also, d u by d y is equal to 0 at the edge of the boundary layer. d u d y is 0 and uh, to the extent that the velocity approaches u infinity asymptotically, the, the continuity of this first derivative survives d u by d y equal to 0 survives uh, as, incre as we increase y and therefore, the last boundary condition is that d 2 u by d y square will also be equal to 0. So, I have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 five boundary conditions, which will enable me to determine A, B, C, D and E. Let us see what those coefficients look like. Each of these coefficients can be represented in terms of the coefficient E, A equal to 0 of course, because of u is equal to 0 at y equal to 0 b will be equal to 3 minus e, c will be equal to 3 into e minus 1, d 1 minus 3 e and e will equal 3 times v w star minus lambda plus 6 divided by 6 plus v w star. So, with these five boundary conditions, if I were to write out the equation, uh, the velocity profile will look like u over u infinity 6 by 6 plus v w star a function f 1, a second function f 2 multiplied by v w star and a third function f 3 multiplied by lambda. f 1 is simply 2 eta minus 2 eta cube plus eta raise to 4, f 2 is this function, f 3 is this function, v w star is a dimensionless v w delta by nu, it is a, it's a, it's a suction and blowing parameter and lambda is delta squared by nu du infinity by dx is a pressure gradient parameter associated with variation of free stream velocity u infinity with respect to x. Of course, I did say that we have to choose the values of v w star and lambda very carefully because in as much as we can allow for any variations of v w and u infinity, we must ensure that the assumed velocity profile is such that u over u infinity is always less than 1 inside the boundary layer for eta less than 1. So, values of v w star and lambda minimum or maximum must be such that this condition holds. Remember v w star can be both positive or negative depends on suction or blowing and lambda depending on whether it is an adverse pressure gradient or a favorable pressure gradient can also be positive or negative and we have to choose these parameters uh, of a within a certain restricted range only, so that the boundary layer approximations are well held. I have plotted uh, three graphs, the middle graph is for no suction or blowing that is v w star equal to 0. When lambda is equal to 0, you will have the flat plate because d u infinity by d x is equal to 0 as you can see here, uh, this will be the profile. Lambda equal to positive values means accelerating boundary layer because d u infinity by d x then is positive. Lambda negative would be d u infinity by d x uh, because d u infinity by d x is negative and therefore, a decelerating boundary layer. So, if I choose arbitrarily values of lambda, you will see up to lambda equal to 12, the u in over u infinity values are well within 1 and up to minus 12, they are very much within 0 to 1. But if I take lambda equal to 30, which is a very highly accelerating flow, then of course, u over u infinity exceeds 1. In fact, that is what would happen for all values of lambda greater than 12 and therefore, 
such values of lambda are not admissible. Likewise, values less than lambda equal to minus 12 are not admissible because velocity itself will turn negative. This is the importance of this comment which I made here. Remember, if u over u infinity exceeds 1, then delta 1 or delta 2 can become negative. So, likewise, if u over u infinity uh, is negative, then delta 2 can be negative and that is not admissible. This is similar profiles for V w star equal to minus 2, which means the suction case and again I have plotted several values. Before I do look at that, let me go back again to V w star equal to 0 value. Obviously, we when uh, lambda equal to 0, I said this is a flat plate solution, but lambda equal to minus 12 gives a 0 gradient at the wall, which means separation must occur. There is a peculiar value lambda equal to 7.052 uh, and the importance of that you will recognize a short while from now. Let me go back again to the suction profile. Here you will see for lambda equal to 12 plus 12 uh, u over u infinity exceeds 1 and of course, for 20 it exceeds very much more. And likewise, here for lambda equal to minus 12, uh, there is a velocity which goes less than 0. On the blowing side, however, up to lambda equal to 20 or little more, uh, there is a u over u infinity well within 1. So, blowing permits much higher pressure gradients, favorable pressure gradients. On the adverse pressure gradient side, again lambda equal to minus 12 is the limit. In integral method, we evaluate three thicknesses. The first one is very well known to you delta 1, which can be uh, where the integration limit from 0 to infinity is replaced by 0 to delta, simply because uh, from delta to infinity, uh, u will remain equal to infinity and therefore, uh, integrals both these integrals will be 0 between delta and infinity and therefore, the, in the limit infinity can be replaced by delta in both of them. In addition, we define a shear thickness mu u infinity divided by shear stress. You will notice that it has a length dimension uh, we call delta 4 and it is called the shear thickness mu u infinity by tau all x. The reason for this you will understand very shortly. So, we have three thicknesses delta 1, delta 2 and delta 4. We could have recovered value of delta 4 even in the similarity method, because we know how the tau wall x varies with x. So, if I substitute our velocity profile u over u infinity equal to all this as a function of delta uh, as a function of eta into our definitions, then you will see that delta 1 by delta would become 1 over 4, 1 plus e by 5 and if I rep, uh, represent uh, e uh, as 3 v w star minus lambda plus 6 over 6 plus v w star, then it will simply read like that. Delta 2 by delta, well this, this integration is somewhat uh, involved because it involves uh, product of u over u infinity squared uh, and that would result into 3 by 28 plus e by 70 minus e squared by 252 or what I have given here by simply replacing e. Most importantly, delta 4 by delta would simply result in 1 minus 3 e 6 plus v w star uh, divided by lambda plus 12. This is quite easy to see. If we see our equation, then uh, remember delta 4 is uh, mu over u infinity divided by tau all x and this is equal to mu times u infinity divided by uh, mu times du by dy at y equal to 0. Now, if you look at our, our, uh, our uh, velocity equation, then you will see du by dy at y equal to 0 will become equal to u infinity 
into uh, 6 over 6 plus V w star V w star into 2 by delta plus V w star into into 0 plus lambda by 6 into uh, uh, 1 over delta. Is that right? So, you will see then uh, if I take delta common, I will get this as u infinity by delta into 6 over 6 plus v w star into 2 plus lambda by 6 and therefore, delta 4 uh, will become equal to uh, mu mu gets cancelled here and uh, u infinity uh, divided by u infinity by delta 6 over 6 plus v w star into 2 plus lambda by 6 and therefore, this and this gets cancelled and delta 4 by delta will read as what I have shown there 6 plus v w star over uh, lambda plus 12 lambda plus 12 and this shows very clearly that if lambda is equal to minus 12 lambda is equal to minus 12 delta 4 will become infinity or if delta 4 becomes infinity then tau all x must be 0 and therefore, lambda equal to minus 12 represents separation. values of u over u infinity were not applicable in our profiles for lambda less than minus 12. We reorganize the integral momentum equation now by multiplying each term by u delta 2 by nu. So, you will see that our equation would now read as uh, u infinity delta 2 by nu d delta 2 by dx plus u infinity delta 2 by nu divided by 1 over u infinity d u infinity by d x plus delta into delta 2 into 2 plus delta 1 by delta 2 equal to c f x which is by 2 which is tau all over rho u infinity square into u infinity uh, uh, delta 2 by nu plus v w by u infinity into u infinity delta 2 by nu. Then you will see this term simply becomes u infinity by nu into d delta 2 squared by d x divided by 2. In this case, u infinity gets cancelled with this and I get delta 2 squared by nu d u infinity by d x equal to now rho into nu becomes mu and u infinity becomes u infinity. So, mu u infinity by tau wall is delta 2 by delta 4 plus u infinity gets cancelled with that and I get v w delta 2 by nu and therefore, multiplying uh, throughout by 2, I get u infinity by nu d delta 2 squared by d x equal to 2 times v w delta 2 by nu plus delta 2 by delta 4 minus delta 2 squared by nu or oh sorry this should be multiplied by 2 plus delta 1 by delta 2 I forgot uh, d u infinity by d x into 2 plus delta 1 by delta 2. 
again the equation maintains its dimensionless form. Now, all I have done is in our derivation uh, delta 2 by delta 4 is, a, is replaced by s and we call it shear factor. Delta 1 by delta 2 is replaced by h which we call shape factor. Delta 2 square divided by nu d u by infinity by d x and that would simply be equal to lambda times delta 2 by delta whole squared as a pressure gradient parameter. Remember what was lambda? Lambda was delta square by nu d u infinity by d x and therefore, this parameter which is kappa, uh, kappa will be simply lambda times delta 2 by delta whole square and that is what that is a pressure gradient parameter. And V w plus will be V w delta 2 by nu is equal to V w star delta 2 by delta because V w star was simply V w delta by nu. Each term is dimensionless you can see this is uh, velocity a length dimension uh, because this is squared and uh, so this 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 has a length dimension and this is nu. So, it is a kind of a Reynolds number which represents rate of growth of momentum thickness delta 2. Kappa is a pressure gradient parameter. This is really a universal relationship. What we mean therefore, that the relationship applies no matter what is the variation of u infinity or the wall, wall velocity. It is a universal relationship between integral parameters delta 2, delta 4 and delta 1. So, let me go to the next slide. By universal we mean that it is applicable, applicable to all types of variation of u infinity including the ones we used in similarity method u infinity equal to c x raised to m kappa which is proportional to d u infinity by d x implies when it is 0 implies a flat plate solution because u infinity equals constant. On the other hand the right hand side f k or u infinity over nu d delta 2 square by d x equal to 0 implies that delta 2 is constant with x and as you will recall from our similarity method, it represents stagnation point solution because for m equal to 1 all thicknesses delta 1, delta 2, uh, enthalpy thickness, uh, heat transfer coefficient all are constants with x. That is the characteristic of uh, a stagnation point solution. Shear parameter equal to 0, delta 2 over delta 4 equal to 0 implies that delta 4 is infinite which in turn implies that tau wall x is equal to 0 and it represents separation. All values of V w plus n lambda for which delta 1, delta 2, delta 4 are less than 0 must be discarded because for these values u over u infinity is either greater than 1 or u over u it is less than 0 which means those are inadmissible values of V w plus and delta uh, lambda. Now, for u infinity equal to c x m, it is easy to derive that kappa will be equal to delta 2 star square divided by 2. I will show you how this is the case. If u infinity is equal to c x raised to m and kappa is equal to delta 2 star by nu d u infinity by d x, then you will see that this becomes delta 2 square by nu c m x raised to m minus 1 or I can write this as c x raised to m into delta 2 squared by x into uh, m uh, yeah I can write like that and this is nothing but c x to m is nothing but u infinity u, u infinity into delta 2 squared by x into m 
which I can write as u infinity oh sorry there should be a nu here. Uh, so, divided by nu I can write this as u infinity x by nu into delta 2 by x whole square into m or uh, that is equal to delta 2 by x uh, square into R e x into m. Now, if you recall in our similarity method, we had defined uh, delta 2 star as delta 2 by x R e x to the half. So, this essentially becomes delta 2 star uh, squared into m and that is what I shown here. Similarly, you can show that f kappa which is equal to u infinity by nu d delta 2 squared by d x uh, can be shown to be equal to 1 minus m uh, delta 2 squared star squared for that value of m. Similarly, here delta 2 square is a corresponding to the value of m you are concerned with. You can also show s for example, what is s? s is equal to delta 2 by delta 4 and that is equal to delta 2 divided by mu u infinity uh, by tau all x or that is equal to delta 2 tau all x divided by mu u infinity. This term can be shown to be equal to f double prime 0 into delta 2 star. It is simply a question of manipulation here and you will see that, that tau all x. For example, this will be delta 2 into mu times d u by d y at 0 divided by u infinity into mu. So, mu and mu gets cancelled and I can construct here delta 2 by x r e by x by half and you will get that f double prime 0. V w plus can also be shown to be b f the similarity parameter b f delta 2 star and delta 2 star m are available from similarity methods. These deductions are very very important as we shall see shortly. Let me plot the results of Remember, I have calculated S V W plus kappa, uh, I have assumed values of kappa and calculated H also from the velocity profile that we assume that is delta 1 by delta, delta 2 by delta 1, delta 4 by delta. For a boundary layer without suction or blowing, the acceleration and deceleration parameters. So, acceleration parameter I have gone up to 12 and deceleration. I have gone up to minus 12 because I cannot go less than minus 12. Then the kappa values take these values. This is 0 0.095 and this goes on to minus 0.157. Delta 1 by delta 2 uh, as you can see uh, compared to 0 where it was about 0 0.3. Uh, with acceleration the displacement thickness reduces and then with deceleration it increases. Same thing holds for uh, momentum thickness divided by delta, uh, it reduces uh, and increases. Inverse is true for shear thickness, uh, the shear thickness goes on uh, increasing whereas, the, on the negative side it when, when there is suction it goes on reducing. So, much so that at minus 12 it reduces exactly to 0. The shape factor h delta 1 by delta 2 is remarkably uh, constant for highly accelerating on an acceleration side, but on decelerating side it goes on increasing quite significantly. This is the right hand side with some values negative and then positive. Now, what is f k to remember again f k is nothing but that value. And when that is equal to 0, when that is equal to 0, it means delta 2 is constant and therefore, it represents stagnation point solution. If you look at here, the stagnation point solution will be somewhere here, here and its value will be 
lambda equal to 7.052 and kappa equal to minus 7824. The similarity solution for delta 2 star m equal to 0 was uh, 0.63 and delta 2 star m equal to 1 was 0.292 and therefore, uh, uh, kappa for m equal to 1 will be 0 0.0841 and f for k m equal to 0, kappa m equal to 0 would be 0 0.44. We will make use of these numbers very shortly, but remember this is the flat plate solution 7.052 lambda is a stagnation point solution and minus 12 is a, is a separation solution. This is what I have plotted here. On the x axis you have kappa the pressure gradient parameter and f kappa which is the uh, rate of growth of momentum thickness parameter uh, on the y axis. So, when kappa is positive we have accelerating flow or favorable pressure gradient when kappa is negative we have the decelerating flow or adverse pressure gradient. The results are plotted when there is no suction and blowing and therefore, V w is star is equal to 0. You will notice that when kappa is equal to 0 the value of f k must represent the flat plate solution and when uh, f k is equal to 0 as we just said it must represent the stagnation point solution. So, the intercept on the y axis represents the flat plate solution whereas, the intercept on the x axis represents the stagnation point solution and uh, f k values turn negative when you have a very highly accelerated flow, whereas uh, when the flow is decelerating f k values are, are positive. Now, using the relationship between uh, uh, kappa and f k with integral parameters, I have also plotted uh, the parameters here. Uh, uh, the similarity solutions here. You will notice that uh, this is the m equal to 1 solution, this is m equal to 0.33 solution minus 4, m equal to minus 4, minus 0 0.04, minus 0 0.065, minus 0 0.085 and minus 0 0.09 is the separation. So, the separation is seen at, at about kappa equal to minus let us say about minus 0 0.07 in similarity solutions, whereas in integral solution the separation occurs at minus 0 0.1567. So, on the integral solution deviates from similarity solution for kappa less than 0, because we have allowed for arbitrary variation of u infinity, but for specific variation u infinity equal to c x m the results go along there. Now, in order to develop a closed form solution, we can see that at least for very moderate decelerating flows and um, accelerating flows, a, a near straight line approximation can be made. This was done by a scientist called Thwaites. It is simply f kappa equal to a minus b kappa and the a will be the value of kappa equal to 0 and therefore, represents flat plate solution a delta 2 star square m equal to 0, whereas b will be simply uh, when uh, f k is equal to 0 or the stagnation point solution and therefore, b will equal a divided by delta 2 star square of m equal to 1. If you look at our previous slide, I have said delta 2 square star m equal to 0 is 0 0.663. So, delta 2 star square would be uh, square of 0 0.663 which is 0 0.44 and therefore, delta 2 star m equal to 1 is 0 0.292. So, 0 0.40, uh, 0 0.44 divided by 0 0.292 will give me this value of 5.17. So, a will become equal to 0 0.44 whereas, b will equal minus 0 0.44. So, f k being equal to u infinity new so, rate of growth of momentum thickness is equal to a constant minus another constant times delta 2 squared by nu du infinity by dx. This is a Thwaites curve fit, a universal 
curve fit for the case in which suction and blowing are absent. We will make use of this relationship as you will see on the next slide. So, just see this was the relationship. I can manipulate this two terms, this term and this term as d by d x of d u del delta 2 squared u infinity 5.7 equal to 0.44 nu for u. To convince you, let me open up again the, the equation, then you will see d delta 2 square u infinity equal to 5.17 by d x will equal delta 2 square into 5.17 into u infinity raised to 4.17 d u infinity by d x plus u infinity raised to 5.17 into d delta 2 square by d x. This is what it would mean uh, and therefore, if I divide this 1 over nu u infinity by uh, raised to 4.17, I will get uh, 5.17 into delta 2 square by nu u d u infinity by d x plus u infinity square by no u infinity by nu uh, d delta 2 square by d x that is equal to 0.44 and therefore you will see that i can write this this equation in this form if i were to integrate this equation from 0 to x then delta 2 squared u infinity raised to 5.17 at x it will equal delta 2 squared u infinity raised to 5 at x equal to 0 uh, equal to 0.44 nu 0 to x u infinity raised to 4.17 dx. So, the solution is applicable to any arbitrary variation of u infinity uh, and restriction imposed by similarity method is now removed. We use this relationship to calculate delta 2 at any x because u infinity at that x will be known. Of course, you must know delta 2 squared at x equal to 0. If you start from x equal to 0 itself, where delta 2 is 0, then of course, that term will be 0. Evaluate kappa from d u infinity by d x. So, now that you know delta 2 squared, you can now evaluate our kappa, which is uh, So, once you have evaluated delta 2, you can now evaluate delta 2 square nu d u infinity by d x, because you already know what u infinity x is. So, for this value of kappa, you can uh, uh, evaluate s value, by knowing the kappa value, you can interpolate to get s value. So, you get a shear stress value, from which you can evaluate s and delta 4 and from delta 4, you can evaluate the skin friction coefficient 2 nu over delta 4 u infinity, which is what we wish to evaluate anyway. So, that is the purpose. In other words, knowing u infinity as a function of x, we get delta 2 as a function of x, from which we get uh, kappa, from which we get s as a function of x. In fact, we get all other parameters, delta 1 as a function of x and so on and so forth and uh, because we know the shape factor variation with x and we can get uh, C f x also as a function of x. So, in the previous table, I had held V w equal to the no suction and blowing. Now, I am saying I am going to set, set lambda equal to 0, which is the case of a flat plate, but allow for suction and blowing and that is what I have done here. So, I allow for blowing parameter to go up to Five. On the suction side, I go up to minus 0.4.2. Delta 1 by delta uh, with blowing compared to V w star equal to 0, the delta 1 by delta 
increases as we expect, delta 1 by delta decrease as we increase suction. This also increases, uh, it is not seen here because I have plotted results only up to second decimal place and uh, on this side it reduces. But notice that at minus 4.4 delta 2 has already turned negative and that is not permitted. So, I cannot go below lambda less than minus 4.2. So, feasible solutions are possible only for lambda greater than minus 4.2 as you can see here. The shear stress also has almost vanished here which means this is where separation is about to take place. The shape factor has increased enormously to 47.25 from uh, the, its average values around 2.7 on the on the positive side, uh, on the blowing side, around this at moderate suction rates, it is about 2.4, uh, but it increases very rapidly to 47.5. This is almost the separation polar profile. And these are the values of F k. Likewise, I have now included effects of both lambda and for a certain V w star, which is minus 0 0.2. Uh, that means, it is a suction case. Uh, with V w star equal to minus 0 0.2 and here I have gone up to 15, but notice that beyond 14.8 uh, or so, S has become negative. Therefore, this is not acceptable solution. Uh, for lambda equal to 15 is not acceptable. On the adverse pressure gradient side, you will see I have gone up to minus 13, uh, but at minus 12, it is 0 already. So, this is the separation occurs and minus 13 is minus 0 0.03. So, this is not admissible. So, effect of uh, pressure gradient on uh, at a certain suction state uh, is valid between minus 12 and 14.5 only. The remarkable feature of uh, this solution is that for a very mild acceleration to all the adverse pressure gradients, the value of V w plus is almost constant. In this, V w plus is almost constant on the suction side. For lambda equal to 0, F k is about 21. You can see that 0.21 and that must equal delta 2 star square and V w plus equal to minus 0.21. This amounts to uh, B f equal to minus 0 0.21 divided by root 0 0.21, 0 0.458. This is the blowing side. And again, you will see for adverse pressure gradients less than minus 12, you have negatives, so you cannot go below that. Again, on uh, V w plus is remarkably constant and this will correspond to B f equal to uh, about 0.2619. For simultaneous variations of V w star and lambda, closed form solutions can again be developed in the regions in which V w plus is constant. You can curve it f kappa equal to a minus b kappa or uh, a relationship of this type can be established where a and b are functions of v w plus. Uh, so, v w star equal to minus 0 0.2 you get a equal to 0 0.21, b equal to 4.2, v w star equal to plus 2 you will get 0 0.84 and 7.4 and manipulation would give again uh, d delta 2 d by d x of this equal to that and therefore, you will get a solution. So, the procedure remains exactly the same uh, as before only the values of a and b uh, change with value of v w star. So, I am taking now a case of flow over a cylinder. It is an impervious cylinder. So, there is no suction or blowing there is an approach velocity V a. Potential theory will show that the free stream velocity u infinity would vary as u infinity by V a equal to 2 times sin 2 x star, where x star is x divided by diameter. So, 2 x star is nothing but x divided by radius and I will call this f x star. Then for this variation of free stream velocity, I can show that delta 2 by d r e d will be simply from equation here using this relationship, I can uh, determine delta 2. Remember delta 2 at x equal to 0 at the stagnation point will be 0 and from there I integrate. So, I can show that delta 2 by d r e d will be that 
and kappa will be this. Our objective is to determine the location of the separation point corresponding to kappa equal to minus 1567 Ra d is equal to V A d by nu which is the Reynolds number defined for uh, flow over a cylinder. And here are the results u infinity by V A is a sine function which goes and beyond 90 deceleration sets in whereas, on the below 90 degrees there is a flow acceleration and this is the variation of kappa and you can see it has reached minus 0.1567 at about 108.3 degrees and therefore, it is associated with separation. So, we have located the separation point from stagnation point from the known velocity distribution arbitrary velocity distribution. Similarly, now consider a cylinder in which there is uh, blowing taking place from the cylinder surface. Then I can curve it as I said f kappa in this manner for different values of v w star and theta separation for v, v w star equal to 0 or 108 and that goes on reducing. You will expect that that uh, is flow over a cylinder with blowing would uh, the separation would occur at an earlier location and that is that is what you see up to V w star at point 2 the separation point has advanced. Average uh, skin friction up to the separation point defined in this manner uh, of course, uh, is highest at V w star equal to 0, but with blowing skin friction goes on reducing. Uh, so, as expected separation angle is advanced uh, with increase in blowing rate with reduction in average skin friction due to thickening of the boundary layer. This shows you the power of the integral method. Of course, what it cannot do is to go beyond the point of separation uh, and complete the analysis of flow over a cylinder, but nonetheless it is a very useful tool to determine. Uh, flow through convergent uh, or divergent nozzles for example, where the boundary layer uh, where the free stream velocity would either accelerate or decelerate with x uh, and you want to determine the thickness of the boundary layers developing on the wall because it is this thickness which determines the discharge coefficients of such nozzles.